Chapter 6 and verse 1, On that night could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthan and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on King Ahasuerus for some unknown reason, as we read of in chapter 2. Remember that Bigthan and Teresh are symbolic of the two political parties, Stalinism and Trotskyism. And it was the Soviet Union that was brought in in 1945 to sweep the Third Reich under the rug, which was a Zionist creation as well as communism, once Nazism had served its purpose. And there you had the occupation of Germany, and you can even read of this in the book of Obadiah. Remember, Edom means red, not the Christians of Russia, but the atheistic communistic system of Russia. Now we have the two political parties in the United States that have been infiltrated by the left and right wing of the communistic system, the Stalinists and the Trotskyites, and it's through this tactic that the Kenites use the United States to lead the world into the one world political system that will emerge at the woe of the fifth trumpet. And the king said, what honor and dignity hath been done to Mordecai for this? This was years ago. See the patience of the Kenites. Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, there is nothing done for him. And the king said, who is in the court? Now Haman was coming to the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. Now this isn't even 24 hours later. Not enough time to build gallows 70 feet high. But again, this isn't a historical account of anything. It's a blueprint of the systems the Kenites utilize to infiltrate the nations of the world, the governments of the world, to merge them together into a one world political system. And the king King's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court, and the king said, Let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, in his mind that is to say, To whom would the king delight to do honor more than to myself? And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delighteth to honor, let the royal apparel be brought which the king useth to wear, and the horse that the king rideth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head. Now we'll see this word horse four times in this chapter. The only time you'll see the word horse in the King James Version of the book of Esther, just as there are four knights in chess, which are horses, and the Kenites always play both sides, not only with the two political parties, but globally between the nations. The grand chessboard, as they call it, is rigged, in other words, and it's the negative part of God's overall plan leading up to that five-month-long hour of temptation. You also see four horses in Revelation chapter 6, and in the build-up to that hour of temptation, they concern the installation beginning in 1830 of the four hidden dynasties, first with education symbolized by the pale or green horse, economics, which is symbolized by the black horse in Revelation chapter 6. You notice the balances in the hand of the rider of the black horse that began in 1913 with the Federal Reserve System, and politics is the red horse, and Edom means red, again 1945 in the United Nations, which will provide the skeletal structure for the actual political beast of Revelation 13. And finally, religion is the white horse, which brings us up to 1948, and the beginning of this final generation, the generation of the fig tree, and 1948 is when the state of Israel was formed. This sets the stage for Satan to appear there, who is ultimately the rider of the white horse in the first seal. Notice the word bow there, toxon in the Greek, which means of the simplest fabric, a cheap fabric imitation, the false Christ. But it began in 1830 with the educational, and as I mentioned in the last chapter, according to Illuminati researcher Eustace Mullins, the Illuminati being the Kenites, the Rothschilds invented communism, fascism, Nazism, and Zionism all in 1830, which is the year Adam Weishaupt died, who had been the architect of the plan, which was finalized on May 1st, 1776. And this is speculation, but perhaps it was because of a twisted satanic perversion of Hebrews chapter 9, verses 16 and 17, that the plan wasn't launched until 1830, when Adam Weishaupt died. Because Hebrews 9.16 says, for where a testament is... There must also be the death of the testator, and it goes on to say in verse 17, For a testament is a force 
after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Speaking in Hebrews 9, of course, of the new covenant and Christ's bloodshed on the cross, but remember that Satan's plan that went into action beginning in 1830, which is when the rapture theory was first unleashed, leads up to that covenant with many for one week at the beginning of the five-month-long hour of temptation. It was seven years, but now it's five months as we know from Revelation chapter 9. So you have to apply that to Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, where it says he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. It was seven years, now it's five months. So in the midst of the week, in the midst of the seven years, becomes in the midst of that five-month-long hour of temptation. That's when Satan appears as Antichrist, in Jerusalem at the sixth trumpet. So Satan counterfeits God's pattern as always, and here is the outline of Satan's method of operations here in the book of Esther in chapter 6, where we see the word horse four times, just like in chess, and in 1830 with the educational, 1913 with the economic, 1945 with the political, and 1948 with the religious, setting the stage for Satan to appear as Antichrist in Jerusalem at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, in the sixth vial, which is when those four horsemen of Revelation chapter 6 take on their ultimate spiritual form, four being the number of verse. So think global takeover here as we continue in Esther chapter 6 and verse 9. And let this apparel and horse, there it is again for the second time, be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man with all whom the king delighteth to honor, and bring him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Then the king said to Haman, Make haste, and take the apparel and the horse, there's the third time we see the word horse here, as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew. Remember that in the Greek, Jew is Iudas, and it can mean one of the inhabitants of Judea or one that's actually from the 12 tribes, and you know what the case is as far as this is concerned. Even though this is a fictitious framework, it's not all that difficult to pick up on the pattern when you ask our Father to lead, guide, and direct you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Mordecai the Jew that sitteth in the king's gate, there it is again, the Tirathites being the scribes, which are the Kenites, men of the gate, let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse, there it is for the fourth and final time, four horses here, and arrayed Mordecai and brought him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate, there it is again, the king's gate, and Mordecai, men of the gate being the Terathites, the Kenite scribes, that is to say, and what did Christ say to the scribes and Pharisees? That they were the generation of vipers, so it's not that hard to tie this together. But Haman hasted to his house mourning and having his head covered, and Haman told Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men, and Zeresh's wife unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, really if this were an actuality, it would be the serpent seed who claim to be Jews, but do lie and are the synagogue of Satan, as Christ said in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9, and chapter 3, verse 9. But they say to Haman, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews before whom thou hast begun to fall, Thou shalt not prevail against him, but shalt surely fall before him. And as Christ said in the parable of the tares in Matthew chapter 13, let both grow until the harvest, because a Kenite has the opportunity to receive salvation. It's whosoever will. So it's undetermined at this time. It's up in the air. How many of the tares will convert to Christianity and become wheat? So leave them alone. They carry out the negative part of God's plan. They're here for a reason, and they will be done away with as a race at the seventh trumpet anyway, because they're hybrids. That's the thing of the flesh. All will change into spiritual bodies at the seventh trumpet, which is the harvest that Christ was speaking of in Matthew chapter 13. The harvest is the end of the world. The Kenites are the natural branches of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil with the tribes of Israel the real tribes of Israel, so long as they're Christian, being the natural branches of the tree of life, God's family tree. 
So not only can a Kenite convert to Christianity and go from Satan's family tree to God's family tree, becoming Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, but it works both ways. At the sixth trumpet, most Christians will worship the devil and they'll go from being on the tree of life, God's family tree, and be grafted onto Satan's family tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and by adoption they are tares and will be cast into the fire as it's written in Matthew chapter 13 unless they get their act together during the millennium. Verse 14 to complete the chapter, and while they were yet talking with him came the king's chamberlains and hasted to bring Haman unto the banquet that Esther had prepared. Esther being symbolic of the whore of Babylon, this banquet will result in Haman's death, so as a type, we see that false wedding feast that occurs at the sixth trumpet, when most Christians will die spiritually and go from being virgin brides waiting for the true husband to the whore of Babylon, which is what Ishtar is symbolic of, also known as Easter. So get into your father's word now, while there's still time whereby you're not deceived at the sixth trumpet whenever the false Christ, Satan, appears in Jerusalem. If a Christian worships him at that time, they're no longer a Christian. They're a devil worshiper and part of the many-membered body of Antichrist, the whore of Babylon, grafted on to that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You don't want that. You want to stand with the gospel armor on and in place in the evil day during that five-month-long hour of temptation, remain a virgin bride, spiritually speaking, waiting for the true husband who shall return at the seventh trumpet, the true Christ. It's at that time that the true Christ will destroy Satan's role of Antichrist as well as his one world system, which is symbolized in Daniel chapter 2 by that image. As it's written in Daniel chapter 2, verse 32, this image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut without hands, this is the true Christ, the true rock, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, Satan's one world system destroyed at the seventh trumpet when the true Christ returns, the true rock, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. Summer is harvest time, as Christ pointed out in Matthew chapter 13. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, a great kingdom, and filled the whole earth. Satan's role of Antichrist, as well as his angels, Daniel's fourth beast, that is to say, will be destroyed at that time. Everyone else goes through the millennium in spiritual bodies, given the opportunity at the end of the thousand years to stand against Satan, and by doing so, they go into the eternity, the third world age.